As of the end of 2019, the total current student loan debt is $1.5 trillion. Here's what that number looks like. Let's have a little bit of fun with this number, but if you're interested in just the meat and potatoes of this video, go ahead and jump to this timestamp. So here's some dollar stats. The thickness of a $1 bill is approximately 0.12 millimeters. If you stacked $1.5 trillion like this, it would create a tower 180 billion millimeters, or get this, 111,847 miles high. That height is equal to 20,335.8 Mount Everests, four and a half trips around the Earth, and 47% the distance to the moon. That would be the Earth here with a stack of money extending out like this. You're gonna see my little stack of dollars. But let's go a little bit further. Let's say we wanted to find out how fast was the tip of that debt tower sitting on the planet actually rotating. In order to find out how fast our little money tower is going, basically we just need a simple formula. And that's the distance that it has to travel divided by the time it's going to take to make that distance. So using the height of the debt tower and the radius of the Earth, I can come up with a circumference or the distance that the money would have to travel in one rotation. This means that if you took $1.5 trillion and stacked it like this, you would have a tower that would extend out into space 47% this distance to the moon and it would be traveling, the tips, those dollar bills at the tips would be traveling at over 30,000 miles per hour. Mach numbers or the, how many times the speed of sound is used to put numbers like this into perspective. Where Mach 1 is about 767 miles per hour. Now the world record for fastest jet goes to the SR-71 Blackbird with a top speed of Mach or M 3.5. That's three and a half times the speed of sound, three and a half times this number right here. Our debt tower is traveling at 39 and a half times the speed of sound. Let's talk weight. This little guy has an approximate mass of one gram and 1.5 trillion of them is 3.3 billion pounds. The largest blue whales can reach a weight of around 330,000 pounds. And that 3.3 billion pounds makes about 10,000 blue whales. And there are currently about 7.7 .7 billion people living on this planet. And if you took that $1.5 trillion and equally divided it among everyone alive on this planet, everybody would receive a check for $194.80. So given all that, what are some ways to avoid contributing to that $1.5 trillion debt tower and actually be able to go to a college and afford it? Number one, FAFSA. This will apply for all different types of financial aid, including scholarships and grants. You just have to make sure that you keep it up to date and you fill it out annually. Two, go to the community college. You'll be able to take your lower end courses and prerequisites much cheaper. And another big perk about going to a junior college is that you become known as a transfer student as opposed to an incoming freshman. And transfer students have proven their chops that they can handle the college life as opposed to incoming freshmen. So their acceptance rates are a lot higher. Three. Make sure that you're going to an in-state university as this will significantly reduce the amount of money that you have to pay for tuition. Have a look at this comparison in prices in going to UCSD as both an in-state resident and out-of-state. 
Now, something that you can do if your dream school is not in the state where you currently reside is after you graduate high school, move to that state, ideally in a town close to where that university is. Now, different states have different rules, so you'll have to look up the requirements for whatever state you happen to be moving to. But usually, if you are living there for about 180 days, which is around six months, you will receive residence status for that state. And two major things are gonna to happen to you when you become a resident of that state. Number one are the tax laws for that state are going to start applying to you. And number two, you will be able to apply to that university as a resident and therefore be able to take advantage of those lower fees. Four, you need to be applying to as many scholarships as you can. I did a video on TikTok about an ideal schedule on how many scholarships you should be applying for within the last year before you matriculate into the four-year university. During the last year before you go into college, months one through nine, you should try applying for at least two scholarships per week. Then in months 10 and 11, start applying to five scholarships per week. And finally, in the last one, kick it up to seven scholarships per week. Now, I got a lot of pushback from this schedule, especially from high school students saying how busy they were and that they didn't have time in order to do this. First of all, that increased pace is only for a couple of months. And second, those couple of months are during summer breaks when you have off. Side notes. Once you apply for the FAFSA, it's gonna put you in the running for the Pell Grant. This is free money that pretty much everybody gets. And now this next one only applies to people in California, but I'm pretty sure there's something for other states. And what I had, what was called the BOG Fee Waiver, now it's called the California College Promise Grant. Now this BOG Fee Waiver, or this Promise Grant, basically waives your tuition fees if you're going to a community college. So with some kind of like a BOG fee waiver, you might be able to go to a community college completely tuition free. And then with a combination of a Pell Grant and any other scholarships that you might get, specifically scholarships that are geared towards that particular community college, that will take care of any other school supplies. So you could technically go to your community college for free. And five. You're gonna have to put in some extra work to bring in extra income. And I've done a couple videos on this channel specifically dealing with flipping items and even starting an eBay store. But the basic gist of it is you go into Craigslist and you find some free items, maybe a table, some furniture, or maybe even like an old TV that people are having to get rid of because it doesn't fit in their new place. You contact the person, you go pick it up, then you bring it home, take a few pictures of it, and then list it on Facebook Marketplace for 30 or 40 bucks. You sell it, you make a little bit of profit, rinse and repeat. So with a combination of all of this stuff, you'll be able to significantly reduce your expenses while bringing in some extra income, all while avoiding having to contribute to that $1.5 trillion debt tower.